Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey! Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Is that what this is? It's what this is. And uh, Jared, we're, we're in the is? eye of a hurricane down here. Yeah, how is that going? Are you guys, are you guys feeling nothing, anything yet, or is nothing, it just like everything else? Nothing's nothing. happening. All the fucking... Uh, all of the businesses downtown, a friend just texted me, are boarded up already. Yeah. And Including it's gonna, in town, by the way. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be like, the wind's going to be like 30 miles per hour. I, like, just relax. They, guys. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, the weatherman was on today, and he was like, hey, man, it's a, it's a 57 mile an hour wind that's supposed to come through from like 10 p.m. to midnight. The city is on lock. Like, the fucking president is coming. Here. I mean, yeah. the real question is this. Did the local news network make a logo for the hurricane? Um, oh, yeah, they always no, do. They, yeah, of course they did. And they sent the fucking Storm Hunter guy here, too. Yes. Uh, oh, God. Here's what here I want to know. So I got a haircut. Storm hunting's stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. I mean, you don't. It's what, just, are you, what are you going to do? Fucking, shoot it and take it dumb. home and mount it on your wall? Get yeah, the fuck out like, of here. <laughs> you, you're going to fucking watch some rain? Like, that sounds boring as fuck. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, so I was getting a haircut right before this. Yeah. And uh, one of the guys was talking about um, just shacking up with his girl all weekend, drinking wine and getting high and shit. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, that's that's a good idea. My question is, if you get your girl pregnant during the hurricane, are you required to name it after the hurricane? Ah, that's a I great think question. so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's a decent rule of thumb or rule of dick. You know? Do yeah. You, so you do, do you think that Hitler was uh, <laughs> conceived during a hurricane? Like his real last name is Smith, but they're like, oh, it's Hurricane Hitler. Yeah, there he comes again. There's going to look in, in nine months. There's going to be a lot of little Dorians little running Dorians, around. Yeah, you don't see a whole lot of Katrinas running around that are fucking. Uh, you don't. That's because old. people were too busy drowning. <laughs> oh, boy. Welcome to well, the show. Was that worse than my there, were, there was very little fucking going on during Katrina. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, what's weird is everybody. Every every time I meet a fucking Katrina, I think the same thing. I'm like, oh, like were the, the devastation. Stating hurricane Katrina. that killed millions of people. Yeah, it's like being named OJ. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> millions of people died during Katrina. I think the death toll was like in the 40s. Jared, I'm no scientist, you know? <laughs> well, I'm no mathematician either, but... We haven't had anything kill millions of people in a while. It, it seems like a lot. It, seem, it's, it <laughs> seems like a lot. So whenever things are a lot, I just throw we'll out the number see. millions we'll and that's it. Um, I get a call from you this morning at 9.30 a.m. You um, did. Kids are off of school. They canceled everything across the board for the hurricane that's coming. I thought Jared was calling to genuinely check on, like, hey, man, what's, oh, no. how are you and the family or whatever? Nope. Instead, he said, hey, man, so I need to run this idea past you. I want to shoot a vacation porn on the cruise. And you yeah. launch into a 20-minute story about this. Tell the yeah. audience what you want to do. Okay, so we're... We're going to shoot a legitimate uh, scripted vacation. Like, like it's also going to be comedy. So, like, like I was telling you, like, I'm going to come in with a tool belt to the cabin. Like, I was here. I'm here to fix your faucet, and she's going to be on the bed. Like, oh yes, it's been leaking all morning. And she bends over, and I get hit in the face with like a bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> and and then the music starts, and it just goes into. The funniest, but sexy. I'll make it. I'll make it cool. I'll make it sexy. I'll make. I'll make you able to jerk off to it. Uh, but the catch is, and this is where Daniel comes in because I need his brain. Yeah, we're gonna title it three words. So when we load it to Pornhub, it's gonna be three random words in a title. But you're gonna have to watch three movies of our choice to solve this giant riddle. Ah, yeah, I could be like using my brain to. Cure diseases. So the or riddle something. Is, Instead. is two paragraphs. <laughs> the riddle, the first paragraph to the riddle, once you solve it, 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 it gives you the three movies you have to watch. And then the second paragraph gives you the clues of where to find those words in the movie that then gets you to this magical vacation porn. So this is extremely elaborate. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Yes. Yeah, it has to be, it's, though. It, it's funny. It's a scavenger. But here's huh. the thing. Once you, somebody solves it, you know they're just going to share the link everywhere. Yeah, but they can't because I'll have all the Drinking Bro admins like ready to not, you know, to, to not approve any yeah, of Yeah, plus posts. we're going to make the caveat that if you share the link with other people, you get banned from the group. 
<laughs> yes, you, it's just not you fair. Should be, you should be celebrating your victory yeah. in silence and make all your friends. I mean, this is our generation's Ready Player One. Yep. <laughs> and if you no. send it, if no, yeah, it is oh, yeah. not. Just relax, Ross. Jared's it vacation absolutely porn is is not our generation's. We've Ready been talking about one. vacation porn since like 2017. This has been building for a while. Yes. Yeah. Now, now there's finally going to be there's finally going to be the, a, a true hidden Easter egg. With a true drinking bros, like puzzle, like map. Like, okay, so I like look. We I, make it. I've, I've I've got a million questions for you here. Then okay, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. let's let's start with this one. Are you starring in this porn? Yes. Okay. Who, who is the the girl no. or girls that are starring in this? No, porn? No, she's still in the military, so let's not use her real name. I mean, we don't use her real name. We just call her White Claw Mermaid. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> so we've got her and you. It's just the two of you guys. Because yeah. I think she, I, I've met her. I think she'd be. We down. might throw we might throw another girl in the mix if we find somebody on the cruise willing willing to know that it's getting loaded. I think it would be funnier if you just threw a random person in the corner of the room and they're not holding a camera, nothing. They're just sitting there. Yeah, very yeah. pool boy style. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just watching. Yeah. yeah, just watching. Watching, God, maybe taking funny. notes on a fucking legal pad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's or, called a paper. Or cut. what if uh, fuck face? We we got a stenographer like. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so great. Okay, so it, it's going to be the two of you guys on the cruise um, having sex. Are you going to be using your face? Like, are you worried about that at all? Yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> okay, this will lead me to my next question. Have you shot yourself having sex before? I would assume yes, but I don't know the answer. Uh, yes. Yes, okay. I have. And, and were you happy with your looks and or performance in, the, in this video? Uh, no, but now that I'm conscious of the shooting's going to happen and it's not spur of the moment, I'll, I'll change some things up to make it a little bit more desirable. Gotcha. Yeah, and Jared doesn't have any tattoos or major scars or anything, so you no. won't even really be able to tell it's him unless he puts his face he's in a, He's a smooth white body. You're a, you're a smooth just white a smooth, manatee. Just a smooth white whale. <laughs> yeah. That's all I am. <laughs> yeah, you're, like you, you, you'd be fine for that porn. And I think, But this is going to be a very fun scavenger hunt for the listeners. It'll like, be a blast. And, and don't give it away. Make people work for it. They have to, and trust me, we're going to choose the worst movies possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like what? that are just long and <laughs> we're going to make sure that you have to watch all the way to the end Oof. to get that, to solve that puzzle. The Island of Dr. <laughs> Moreau. Like that's one that where I'm just like, man, I couldn't get through it. Could you get through the Tarantino movie last night? I, I didn't think it was that bad. Okay. Honestly, I thought it was a good movie. It was a little disjointed, like parts of it. Uh, spo- Isn't that every yeah, Tarantino it is, it movie is. disjointed? Spo- <laughs> spoiler alert, but the way they handled the squeaky from Manson, Sharon Tate thing was weird. Like, why? Was I, any of that? Yeah, I don't understand like, I that. get it. It was like a reverse in Glorious Bastards where he changes. It's historical fiction where he changes something yeah. to be like revenge porn or whatever the fuck. I get it. But this one was just, like there was no point to it. No. Um, I thought aesthetically it looked great. Um, but I look. That it was, was great. The acting was acting was great from, from everybody. Everybody was, was great. great. It just you know, the story it, was, it was weird. The story was weird. I think he did it. I saw I saw Aladdin recently, and that's the first time I've watched a Guy Ritchie film that I didn't see Guy Ritchie t- touch in it. Oh no shit! You know I was going to ask that. So you love Guy Ritchie? You're the biggest yeah. Guy Ritchie fan I've ever met. Um, obviously, there's a, a ton of fans of his because he keeps directing huge budget movies for studios. You loved. Uh, King Arthur. King Arthur. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, so he directed Aladdin. There was no Guy ritchie to it? No. No. I mean, about halfway through, I actually like really focused to be like, okay, where's he putting his touch on this? Where's he putting his touch on this? It's going to be in the editing because, you know, the script's already written for him. They've got to do the musical numbers and such. But I just didn't see it. I didn't see a shred. Like, and I don't know if that's because Disney just handcuffed the fuck out of him or... He just wasn't. I mean, I just, I don't see Guy Ritchie really being happy doing Aladdin. You know, well, what I the, mean? that that money made him happy. I can tell you that because yeah. it just crossed a billion dollars in the box office and was actually it's Will Smith's highest grossing movie of all time. Wow, wow really? Yes. Um, and uh, you know, look, you can back up for the cash. Uh, John Favreau, man, does does a bunch of that shit. He did, you know, that Lion King movie, and yep. uh, uh, you know, you can't blame him from the cash. So that being said, is your movie going to be Guy Ritchie ish in the edit? Your porn? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. 
Because I, I know you've been talking about doing sketches like this for a while, right? Um, yeah, yeah. If you're going to shoot, because you're the director of this as well. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a Guy Ritchie style. It's gonna be Guy Ritchie style music, like score to it. It's gonna be, you know, and it's gonna be fucking weird and funny. <laughs> I can't wait. So we'll have a drop date for it after the cruise. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a date that it goes live. You know, we'll do a show that day in celebration. I'll let you guys pre- I'll premiere it, or, or you know, we'll premiere it yeah. while we're doing the show. Yeah, that'd be fucking awesome, dude. Mystery science <laughs> theater style. Yeah, yeah, it'll be me, you, Dan, Jesse. Like all of us will watch it. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Jesse's gonna want to watch that. Nah, actually, she'll totally she, watch she, that. Yeah, she'd sit through it. She like she's fine on porn. Um, okay, she'll get down and she likes the amateur stuff too. So that's true. She does like amateur. It'll be yeah, weird but this isn't watching. gonna be amateur. You know, I'm going full 4K. Good editing. Yes, some graphics. Couple special effects moments. What? Gonna gonna stop you right there on the Not special sure. effects. Is, is it gonna be like Titanic? Is the boat gonna yeah, go is down our boat at some going point? To go down? Like what's gonna happen? No, 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 no. But I mean, the grand finale, like it's gonna be something like Scary Movie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> how how Where is she's it going just, to be like Scary Movie? He's gonna have she's a strong gonna take hand? like yeah. She's gonna take like six and a half gallons to the face. Oh, of just loads. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to have to reshoot. You're going to have to shoot a lot of loads then, Jared, because it's No, no, no. I mean, it's a special effects. Like I'll digitally I'll digitally Oh, got gotcha, you. Gotcha, or you, gotcha, you can gotcha. just go to the fucking sex shop and buy 3 or 4 gallons of that fucking fake cum. Is yeah. that a thing? Yeah, oh yeah, fake cum oh, yeah, is a yeah, thing. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's a thing. Since when? I don't know, but there's a whole new series of porn on Pornhub called Come 4K. Uh-huh. And it's like uh like buckets. It's weird as shit. I hate fake cum. I want to see real yeah, cum in gross. porn. Yeah. I you know what? I never shot that video idea I had, um, which I still want to with the horse cum. I called it horse cum. And, and we I- we spent a whole day, uh, me and the Velvet Dame spent a whole day fucking figuring out how to make the best looking fake cum. Oh, of all time. Yeah. I understand how to make it. There, there was, uh, ironically, a fucking Lena Dunham episode on Girls where somebody jacks off on one of the characters. And that, the, the fake coming, that was the most realistic I've ever seen. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, and and I disgusting. hate that show. Yeah. But it was one of those where, like, Jesse was, was watching it. She goes, she paused and she's like, you're not going to believe this. Watch this scene. And this girl just gets jacked off on and i was like man that come is really realistic i did not know that was a thing that they were selling at sex oh yeah, yeah. i feel like we should write something like that into janitors oh boy that'd be great <laughs> it's just like a two and a half minute scene and it's come the whole time well the last nine oh, minutes gross. of janitors is a is a sex scene yeah. so um yeah just turn this add an extra minute of nothing but ejaculate oh gosh <laughs> and then it cuts the end <laughs> i'm not like i don't i don't need to see a gallon on a girl at the end of a porn uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. like i don't need to see a gallon i'm good for you know maybe four or five ropes and here's that's, here's that's what it. i want to see at the end of the sex scene the 9 minute sex scene uh-huh. i want to see like 30 to 45 seconds of ejaculate right. and and then the guy starts to panic at the end, and then it just cuts the end. And why is he panicking? Because if you come for more than a few seconds, yeah. I think you should panic. <laughs> right? Because something is fucking wrong with you. I think the most of the longest I've had was uh, like maybe on drugs, where you're on drugs oh, yeah, and yeah. you're like, man, I feel like I'm coming for 10 minutes right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's like, wow, wow, this is really. Is this going to stop? This is really is this, happening. Is this just my life now? Yeah, this is this just my life? Um, are we. Are we so, are we allowed what? to talk about uh, what you were doing the other night at your parents' house on the air? I think we should save that for its own episode. Okay. Because it was, pretty, I think, it was I think, pretty spectacular. I think, yeah, I think we should save that uh, because that's going to be, there's, we go in, I think we should dive into the science behind it. Yes. Uh, and the psychology. And then we, yeah, we go full, we go full bore. But, uh, you know, a good thing, Dan can speak on this because he's been monitoring it as well. What I posted in Drinking Bro Singles this morning, Dan. Oh, what was that? Uh, you're talking about the nudes thing? Uh, no, the, uh, no, the robots. Oh, sex robots. Yeah, yes. big time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I it's- posed, Ross, was, you know, we're five years probably from sex robots becoming, uh, available down to like a lower middle class price point you know where they're readily available for everybody correct this is going to bastardize the dating pool for singles 
like already in 2019, we've seen a massive decline in marriages just because guys are kind of over it, like risking their shit in their late 20s, mid 30s. You're not, but so, everybody else is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so it's like people are not getting married like they used to. Uh, and and people are just kind of. You know, you've got this giant uh, polyamorous wave on the West Coast in Silicon Valley, up in New York and things like that, where everybody's poly. Like, relationships are changing. But when you start throwing these sex robots into the mix, I'm, I'm <coughs> predicting that you're going to pull at least 15 to 20% of men out of the dating pool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because they're just going to be satisfied with their sex robot. Yeah, here's what I wrote on... In a, as a response uh, to his comment. So this is ba basic market economics. Uh -huh. So your product, and that is a woman's vagina, Correct. basically, uh, is becoming devalued due to competition, risk, and market saturation. So the solutions are to improve your product, which I'm not sure how you do that. Yeah, you can't improve uh, so, Well, pussy, you can, though. You, you can do, you can do you more. You improve the personality. You can do more with it. You yeah. can yeah. surround it by better things and not just think you can coast on. Not that all women think they can just coast on their vag, but there's a lot of, especially super hot girls, that just think, oh, I'm super hot. I don't need a personality. I don't need to learn how to fuck. Yeah. I don't need to do yeah. weird shit. 100%. You're right. Uh, then the other thing is, um, well, my examples were hitting the gym or doing anal. Um, and then you can mitigate risk perhaps by proposing to men and offering in advance to sign prenups because part of the risk is that dudes aren't willing to surrender half of their shit anymore just for a piece of ass. Sure. Unless you're a private in the military, in which case they Yeah, but no, what this, I mean, what it's going to turn into is essentially like they're just going to have to come up with a whole new value proposition. Yep. Because if, if, if we can have our needs met by an animatronic thing and we don't have to deal with the fucking bullshit that comes with it, with it, with it then why why wouldn't we choose that yep. so girls are going to have to become more relaxed more chill more like european women for the most yep. part because american women they they're terrible they their attitudes are terrible they're they're, they're they just suck well it's bad like, business to to think that your product has more market value than what it really does because yeah. then you're going to overcharge for it and you're going to get pushed out of the market by better and less expensive products. And again, we're, and when, so, when you say products, we're talking about pussy. So. Not, not just her Well, vagina. we're talking about the, the person. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. not talking so the about total package. the well, person no, is the I'm, product. I'm, the, the vagina and then there's those two other holes as well. Okay. Because, Ross, like you think about this, you remove 20% of single men off the market. Like your late 20s and early 30s women that are single, like now... They're, they have to actually compete. It's no more I'm sitting back and letting my Tinder inbox fill up. Now it's like they, they're going to actually have to pursue and be aggressive. And they're going to have to, like, like what Dan and I are talking about, you're going to have to be, come with new value propositions. So it's like instead of showing up at the first date, like, like the dude's like, yeah, I got a sex robot at home. Like, what do I, what do I need this for? She's, well, well, I like other chicks. You know, they're going to have to, they're going to have to adapt to attract. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's funny. So, you know, Jesse watches those fucking Bachelor shows, my wife, right? Um, I walked in on one last night, Bachelor in Paradise. It was a girl. She was maybe late 20s, 28, 29. And she was crying in the camera about this guy didn't like her or whatever, didn't pick her for the fucking thing. And was just like, I'm tired of dating. I'm over it. I just want to find a husband and move on so I don't have to be in the dating circle anymore. Um so I can see, I can definitely see where this would start happening more and more, where it's just like, all right, great, we've got to step up our shit. But on the flip side of that, does that mean dudes get lazier because there's going to be... It absolutely will. Yeah, like, dudes are going to get lazier. <laughs> and, and they'll become more demanding. Like I'm saying, like, you're not going to choose a girl unless she's showing up saying, listen, we'll fuck three times a day. I'm bisexual. We'll bring girls home together. I won't complain and I have a job and I'll make money for us too. Like, it's like, oh, okay. I think it's a good thing. And here's why. Uh, one, I like aggressive women, but it's not just a good thing for me. It's a good thing for the species at large because it gets, it pushes shiftless layabouts out of the gene pool. So do, yeah. dudes who are content to just fuck a robot and not use it, you know, recreationally. Yeah. They're, they're gone. They're out. Yeah, And then women who are too dumb to realize their position in this whole situation or too lazy or too arrogant or whatever to fucking like 
mold themselves to match the market, they're gone too. Right? Yeah. And now it's only alphas banging, making babies. And then well, yeah, we can yeah, dominate the fucking world, dude. Exactly. You're right. It, it's going to correct itself is what's, what it's going to do. Yeah. So explain Czechoslovakia then to me. Because they've got the hottest women on the planet, and they're just rolling around. They've also got the fucking grossest women on the planet. It's all of the Eastern Bloc plus Russia. You're either fucking a 10 or you are a 1. There's no in between there. <laughs> You're either some linebacker milkmaid out in the fucking... In the, in Siberia? The, yeah, in yeah. Siberia somewhere. Or you're like some fucking hot piece of ass that's going to probably be in porn at some point, right? Yeah, because that's a big thing in porn now where the, the, Czechos, the Czechs, they have their own category now on all oh, yeah. these sites. And I was oh, like, yeah. why the fuck do these girls have their own... All the fake, so uh, the taxi thing, the fake agent thing, that's all in the Czech Republic. Yeah. Why, why is that? By the way, Czechoslovakia hasn't Probably existed because since the 90s. They're just producing more content. Like, mm -hmm. you know, French women are too busy being bitches. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so it's like the Czech women are like, fuck it, let's make porn. Because, yeah, they've got Czecho, the Czechoslovakian wife swap. That's an hour and a half program. Like, it's cool as shit. I watch that all the time. It's really funny. Wait, wait. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. Did, did they fuck them? Oh, yeah. yeah. What? And some of them, it, it's like a reality show, but it's, it's the reality show you wanted to see on ABC. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they have that over like, here, but they definitely don't fuck the husband. No, no. They just make it dramatic and like stupid and like they're yelling at each other's kids. What's and shit the like point that? No. of having the, a fucking partner swap if you show can't bang. If you're not you don't fucking, bang, dude? That's yeah. stupid. So what happens that's, then? That's something, by the way, I want to experience in 2020. I, I want to get into a relationship that I, where I really like the person, and then I want to do a same-room trade. For how long, though? So, like, how long, how long is the check, the, the, the check one? How, like, oh, how, oh how, that's, what, that's are they like a, a month apart, or are they a week it, it, apart? It's a week. It's like two weeks or something like that. I don't know. The last one I watched, like... The dude really wanted to change, like, stay with the girl that he swapped with, and she was like, "No, dude, I, I, I just swapped, and now I want my husband back." <laughs> Fucking a, dude. A lot of shit can go down in two weeks. Oh, yeah. a, a week, a week. If you were, because let's face it, if you got to <laughs> swap right, and you were married. You'd be banging fucking ten minutes in, probably, right? Oh, oh absolutely. I, I just want to oh, let, yeah. just in case I ever end up on a wife swap reality show i want to let my future wife know i'm banging the other girl for sure i don't care absolutely i don't care yeah. if it's in the rules of the show or not we're fucking <laughs> and if not i'll be gone in 10 minutes yeah i'll be back home i'll be like hey she didn't she's like what are you doing here she didn't want to fuck I'm like okay <laughs> guess that makes sense so since no how funny would it be how funny would it be if like i swap like let's say i'm on the show and then I'm cheating on the new wife. Like, <laughs> God. Which would 100% happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. You'd, you'd fuck the like, nanny, the... Boot. The swapped wife. Yeah, the swapped wife, like, gets mad because she catches me getting nudes from girls on my phone. <laughs> so do they show oh, it over good. there? Like, do they show the oh, actual dude, fucking... Dude, it's, it's on Pornhub. It's an hour and a half show called Check Wife Swap, and it's no fucking amazing. Way. Yeah, how, how did I not know about this? I I don't know because I've talked about it before. I love watching it. Like it's yeah, fun as but shit. a lot of the things you say, Jared, are very questionable. Where I, but I'm again, like, hey. like I said, in 2020, I want to get into a relationship where I really like the person, and then I want to do a same room swap. Wow, man! I want to see. I want to see how it makes me feel. Here's the thing: you got to do though. If you're whichever couple finishes first, mm -hmm. they have to direct the other couple. Yeah, That's they become the role. remote. Yeah, they become the remote. Yeah. So you, you'd be all for this. Like, you, you'd be down for this. Like a normal, let's say a normal girl, right? Not Because you were married to a porn star before. So a normal yeah. girl, you'd be all in of like, hey, man, let's, I, I love this girl. I am in love with this girl. And you would want to swap. Yes, because I just want to see, I want to I know what I'm going to feel while I'm watching her get banged by some dude. Wow. I can definitely not say that for myself. Um, Why? I don't I want mean, to see my wife get, I, I, No, I don't want to see my wife get bent. <laughs> I'm, I'm good on that. I'm, I'm, listen, me and Dan are on a quest to like live life. You well, know? It's, we're going to experience everything. Yeah, yeah. I think you're just being selfish. <laughs> yeah. I think like, he's let me, let, me, let, me, let me clarify. Selfish so. to myself or her? <laughs> to her. 
<laughs> Look, <laughs> if you were a chef, would yeah. you get mad at your wife for eating at another restaurant? That would be completely no. delusional. No. Like, yes, that would be insane a- behavior. Absolutely. Just because it's something that society has told you is, is tapped. <laughs> yeah, you're indoctrinated. <laughs> you're like, it's you're completely indoctrinated. There's, there's nothing. In, there's you're, no rule of fucking human life out there that says, oh, you got to fucking stay monogamous. That's bullshit. We just made that yeah, shit up. We, we, we made it up and then we taught it to ourselves. Yeah. Like if you if you were raised in a in a city where relationships were fluid and your parents as growing up would have different partners over different days of the week. This this wouldn't be a big deal to you. You'd be normal. And think that's about the it. Thing. Think, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to break myself out of is yeah, yeah. I'm fed up with what I was ind- indoctrinated to believe is correct. And well, now I'm just going all out. Life can be super tough. It can be boring. It can be a lot of bad things. It could also be really great. So I won't, I don't want to deprive my, someone that I genuinely love from some kind of joy or pleasure just because I'm not the one creating it. That is fucking like, That's pathological behavior, in my opinion. Okay, so uh, all of this being said, I've I've posed this question to my wife before, and it is a resounding 100% no, you cannot fuck other women. Because she's indoctrinated as well. We've we've attached our (laughs) self-worth to the idea of monogamy, and it feels like someone is taking something from us when they do something for themselves. Yeah, I think think another thing is, too, is we've gone a completely wrong direction with relationships and even marriage that you have some sort of possession over that person. And why, why, why do you own that person? That's a, that's their own person. Like, and it's, it's and not, an, it's not owning someone as if, if, if they're a slave, it's more of a trust issue. So do you trust that person after, you know, them banging it's more, somebody else? It's more of a comfortability. It's, it's the comfortability to say, it doesn't matter to me who you have sex with because I know who has your mind and your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not out there searching for a different connection. You are just searching for a sexual connection and that's it. And if you have, if you have the freaking the ego to, to put up, that's like, no, you're not going to find anybody better than this. And I trust that. So that's my, where it all comes m- in. My highest level of that would maybe be a Jack shack, right? Um, so, <laughs> Some form of, of uh, Jack Shack for, for man, chicks, a man or a woman, you know? So you wouldn't mind if she went into a rub and tug and got rubbed out? By an Asian man, no, I wouldn't. Like that, like, I'd be okay with that. But as soon as there's penetration, that's where you develop. But see, I, I'm... Like, what's I'm, the difference? I, with, with a, maybe with a rubber glove uh, hand, you know? Over no, the, over I'm talking hand. about his little Asian wiener. Yes. Uh, if he worked there? Yeah. Yeah, it, it it would have to be part of that experience. I, I would I would maybe allow that. My ex's sister uh, went to India, and mm-hmm. she was getting so many red flags here. But she was getting a massage in the basement of the hotel from an Indian man, which is just red flag. <laughs> you should never have gone into that room if you're watching or listening to this show. Um, but he kept trying to fucking uh, touch her vagina repeatedly throughout the process, and she was like, "No, I'm good. No, I'm good." But I don't understand why. Like, if some dude's going to finger blast you out, just let it happen, right? Yeah, and so I, I have, like, I've had girls who were friends say, hey, man, I have gone to places where I've got blasted out after a massage. Yeah, why not? That's like the... Oh, are you serious? It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Girls it makes have? It makes yes. sense, dude. Like, I've, I personally have never been jerked off after a massage before because I don't let strangers touch me. But if, I mean, that makes sense to me. You get super relaxed, you're feeling better, and then somebody jerks you off, and that's the end of the program. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there was a, there was a girl that I dated, and she said it happened to her in the past, right? Mm-hmm. And even though we were dating, like, you know, because immediately as a dude, jealousy kind of kicks in. And then, then I was like, ah, where were you? She was like, oh, I was at this fucking Russian bathhouse. It was this place down in LA or whatever. And I was like, oh, oh all right. Well, I guess that's not terrible. Listen, th- these are just the facts, okay? Let me, let me run through a few things. One, most men, 63% of men who cheat are still in love with their partner. Yes. I, is, I, I would, oh, yeah, that's I'm, absolutely correct. So I, like, I, I thought that number would have been higher, actually. Probably in the 75 may, Maybe range. it is. Maybe it's higher. I don't know. But th- these are, this is the data I've seen. So uh, an overwhelming majority of men who cheat on their wives, it's not because they're looking for emotional shit. And also, it's usually a chick that's not even as hot as their wife. They're just, oh, yeah, they're yeah. just it's, jerking it's, it's off with somebody like, else's body. That's yeah. all they're doing. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree on that one because I, I've seen uh, friends hook up with whatever and oh, it's yeah. just like, oh, that girl? And it's like, yeah. yeah and women, women never leave men because of bad sex ever. So it's not about the sex, obviously, for either gender. 
So the sex is not a component in the emotional relationship. It is an addition to it, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not, it's like a, it's like a secondary crime. You can't get pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt, but if you're not wearing a seatbelt, when you get pulled over, you'll get a ticket. Fucking and love. Sure. They can intermingle, but they're not the same thing. Yeah. Well, so why not separate the two, put them, well, put them together when they make of, sense. Yeah. And that's where, that's where we're, I think we're a really stupid species because I mean, nine out of 10 of my friends, every, if I just look at all of them, everybody's been fucking everybody's done something, you know, with infidelity. And it's like at one point in your life. So if that's, if that's something that every human does, why the fuck haven't we modified to, to adjust for it and be real with ourselves rather than fucking be, be like, pretend that this fantasy exists. Yeah. Look, you you guys are better men than me. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to do it, but a Jack Shack, I would be able to put up with. And if they're getting finger blasted at a Jack Shack, it better be on a ghost bed from <laughs> ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. <laughs> I want to know if my lady's getting blasted that it's on a comfortable mattress oh, yeah. where her neck is protected uh, in case of some form of whiplash from an intense orgasm yeah. uh, that it will fall gently into a ghost pillow which are just as amazing as the mattress. And if you're at home and you're a military or first responder, you get 15% off uh, off of everything in the store at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, adjustable bases, pillows, and the most comfortable mattresses on the planet. Uh, if you're a regular civilian like myself, they get uh, $200 off the classic, $100 off the uh, switch that, the ghost lux $200 off, and then 100 off the classic, and free pillows. As always, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, they got a 36-month no interest pay as you go program. No one on the interwebs is doing that. Next up, we got blackriflecoffee.com. Jared Taylor, why don't you oh. tell us about it? Oh, yes, we got a lot of new stuff coming out. The the uh, the collab that we did with On It, the Fuck Yeah Coffee. We're going to be doing a bunch of really funny fucking 80s commercials with Fuck Yeah. Uh, I've got a bag of Just Black here uh, because I'm part of the coffee club. And coffee gets shipped to my door every week. Yep. Uh, so if you want to, you know, just take one of those things off your list that you don't have to worry about doing or don't have to worry about getting when you're at the grocery store so you don't run out, join the Black Rifle Coffee Club now. Uh, I believe Black. we got some codes, Drinking Bros or Summer Dog. Yep. Uh, Drinking Bros 20. Uh, Summer Dog will work for 20% off at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Uh, the subscription of the month, again, that, that's the coffee club, man. Shows up on the same date of every single month, rain or shine. It. You get to choose if you want whole bean, if you want ground, when you want it to show up. So, I mean, it's all customizable <laughs> to you. And club men- members get offers uh, to new products first before uh, they go live on the website. So, yep. things like Power Llama and a couple other yep. uh, board really shorts, fun man. Yes. Oh, the board, board shorts were shorts. great. Yeah. Amazing. They also, uh, they also get access to the over 45 partner discounts that yep. are listed on the, the Coffee yeah. Club page now. A lot of partner discounts. Uh, who, who do we got up next, Anthony? Uh, let's see. We got uh, Box of Awesome. Yeah, boxofawesome.com. Man, I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan of these guys by the day. I did not know that they switch boxes like every month, so you can't get the old ones anymore. Right. They just have new ones, and they keep... Because I was like, oh, shit, I wanted this one thing on there, and I went to go back and get it, and they're like, sorry, asshole, you didn't fucking order it that month. And I was like, god damn it, well, I can't get it anymore? And they were like, no, we have new products every single month, and that's the rules. Um, They just have cool shit. So Jesse just got some fucking meat cleavers from them. (laughs) Uh, You got, what, what did you get the other day? Um, I got a fucking axe, actually. Well, not an axe, a hatchet kind yeah. of thing with a hammer on the back of it. It's fucking sick. For dudes, uh, they have, yeah. look, they have decanters. They it's kind of like uh, a very... Cask. A cask. Yeah, for, for, uh, for, for whiskey. For whiskey, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, fucking whiskey, sick, dude. Those whiskey things are cask. fucking nice. I haven't gotten that one yet. That's the one I actually want, because right now I have, uh, I have a lot of single malts. And yes. I, have, I have them in glass right now, but if you put them in that cask, it ages over time and it releases some of the gas. I, I did not know that until I saw it on the website and was like, motherfucker, man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, you fill out a little, a little five questionnaire. It tells you who you are. And uh, look, if you're getting some, some fucking makeup and shit, you know, as a dude, that'll tell you, hey, man, your questions are a little off. Hey, but, uh, man. Hey, man. They tailor it to you. It's like, a, it's like fucking Christmas once a month and it's 45 bucks. Uh, promo code Drinking Bros 
Gets you 20% off at uh, boxofawesome.com on your first box. And, uh, dude, I'm, I'm addicted now, and I can't wait to see what's next. Because the cleaver thing, you, like, you put your fist through it, and you can just... Yeah, Boom, it's almost that shit. it's almost like those bear claws used to tear meat apart after yeah. you smoke it. But it's like a straight. It's almost like a pizza cutter, but you can use it to cut whatever the fuck, dude. It's dope as shit. And you could also, in the event of a zombie apocalypse, you could fucking murder all uh, kinds of zombies. Murk somebody, dude. Yeah. Uh, boxofawesome.com dot com promo code Drinking Bros twenty percent off. Last up, we got uh, is it is it expressvpn dot com yep. yeah. forward slash Drinking Bros. Protect your shit. Protect dude. your digital butthole. That's what I'm saying. Yes, that's the, I, that might be their new slogan. Yeah, I think it is. Protect your digital butthole so uh, cyber attacks don't happen, man. Protect your fucking accounts across the board. Protect um, the digital beehole. Yeah, especially if you have a PC. Let's make a fucking commercial for these guys about protecting your digital butthole. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> and it's just an iPhone right up against spread cheeks, and it's like, no, no, protect it. It's Dikembe Mutombo like this right here. Yeah, right in front of your asshole. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Seven bucks a month. Uh, it's just an app that runs seamlessly in the background Jesus of... Uh, your laptop, iPhones, uh, desktop, any computer device that you have. Also, if you, you work someplace where uh, you want to watch porn and, mm -hmm. and other shit, if it's running on there, your bosses won't know. You can crack that firewall at expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. How hard are you going uh, on the cruise with, with your lady? I was surprised to see that you picked a girl to take with you. What? Oh, well, you know what? It's somebody that I'm... Doing quite a bit of experimenting with. Is that why? Because uh, I, I wanted to ask you that. Like, she seems down for whatever. Yeah. And that's, and it's also too, like, uh, we, we have really strong feelings for each other. We really like each other. But it's been fun, like, dabbling in this, you know, knowing that she's out doing things when, you know, she lives in different states. So knowing that she's out going out with other guys and stuff like that, and I'm seeing other girls, like, we're, like, slowly weaning ourselves into this. You know, swingers. If pool. we ever, yeah, you know, yeah. I've always said that you should just fuck your friends. Yes, no, I've been saying that for years. Yeah, I know. Well, look, you have kids, and you're not going to have any more. You're done, right? So now, yeah. if you're yeah. going to do it now, now's the time to do it. Get that V-sec, though. Yeah, do you have a V-sec, dude? No, not yet. I need to. Did you? It's on the list. Did you it's order the, the kit? No, nah, not yet. You know what we should do? To. We'll get that kit, and then somebody cuts your hair on the cruise, and then. Yeah, somebody somebody gives you a VSEC on the cruise. Too. What do you think? I, you know, I think we could do it. I think if 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 there's ever been a good place to do it, it's at sea. Yeah, yeah. Not, during, not only is it at sea during a hurricane, during but <laughs> but with our listeners. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel like one of them could absolutely perform perform a, a vasectomy. Well, yeah, Matt, Matt's an EMT. Is he really? Yeah. Is that real? I didn't know. No, I, it's real. Matt like, does so much shit. I never know if it's real or no, not. When, you're in, when like, you're in regiment, you get access to all sorts of different schools. EMT is a big one. I think, uh, isn't Rocco an EMT as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rocco's a big medical guy. Yeah. Yeah. I knew Rocco was. I didn't yeah. know Matt. That was genuine. It's, it's like you get, you can go to free fall school. You can go to fucking sniper school. You can be an EMT. EMT is the one a lot of guys do because it's applicable out once you get out of the military. Yeah. Honestly, like the cruise, I think for me, I'm going to try and take advantage of having that time with Danny. And, and, and really sit with Matt and Danny and write, you know, let's try and write an album. Uh, because we have a lot of downtime. Yeah. You know? Well, We're look, performing man. two nights. Yeah. And Danny Warsnop, dude, is one of the most gifted fucking voices and performers that I have ever seen. Um, for real. And because he's playing acoustic on this cruise. And I caught yes. his acoustic show in Akron, Ohio, a couple months back. Holy shit, that guy's talented. Yeah, that's man. the thing I'm looking forward to most on the crew. Is to be same honest. as a fan. Yeah, like just as a fan, and I feel weird about it because I like he hit me up the other day, and I was like, dude, I can't wait to see you on the cruise, like exclamation mark. And I felt like a, a fangirl. I was just like, I, I'm, I'm in a dude way. I'm in a dude way. But it was totally, <laughs> it was totally in a fangirl way. I was just mm -hmm. like, man, I, I get to see a freak concert with one of the best musicians on the planet. Yeah. Um, so I'm super stoked about that. Have you guys ever written shit together before? Uh, him and I started one for, for Nitro Circus and it was really fun, but that was when I like first met him, you know, now that we've been friends for over two years, like, I think it's going to be a lot more fun, a lot easier for us to sit down and go, okay, let's do this. Like, let's, let's come up with some stuff, you know? Yeah. I wrote a new one the other day, um, that I'm finishing 
probably this evening that Matt and I will start recording probably next week. So it's a, it's a good one. I think, I, I think we're going to call it Fayetteville. Really? <laughs> That's really fucking funny. It's a good one. It's a good You guys will like it. You guys will like it. Yeah, because um, uh, the collaborations you guys do off camera or off, you know, uh, and when I say camera, I mean like pretty much everything we do is videoed or, or whatever um, is, is actually incredible. Like I heard Matt's song with Tim Montana. I don't know when yeah. that comes out, but that was fucking amazing. Next year, uh, it'll be ne- in 2020. That's Tim Montana's like 2020 big single that him and Matt wrote. Okay. And that's, that'll be on what? His new album? Tim's, yes, yes. Man, uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be fucking rad. Um, I'm looking forward to sending my little satellite out on the cruise to find us a little, a little single, you know, drip it to bring back to the room. <laughs> Do you think that's, that's going what, down? Absolutely. I guarantee you. I guarantee you she'll find somebody on the, on the cruise for us. Because it's the girl, right? It's the girl in the situation who always finds the yeah. other girl oh, yeah. out and, and she's, about. She's amazing at it. Like she's like a little velociraptor that also speaks girl. You know? Yeah. Well, you can't send the dude over. No. no. Because then it seems like the other woman that is a hostage of some sort. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah. if you look like the two of us yeah, assholes. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> fucking bearded white dudes. That's serial killer 101. You don't get in a fucking car with us. No, nope, you, you don't go to an Indian basement either for a <laughs> massage. And you uh. definitely don't get in a car with you guys. Here's my prediction then. I think, I think you, it'll happen for you, but I think it'll happen at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Because I think oh, a, yeah. a lot of people yeah. go hard early morning and in, in, uh, afternoon on the cruise. And then I think right around that 3 to 4 p.m. range, you'll be able to rock that out. Yeah, Here's, I, I kind of my kinda goal. My goal is to have some kind of weird encounter with somebody that's not in the Drinking Bros group. And mm. like, like, like that, that should be the thing. Dan, you should, you should, the first two days, you should find a date to the show. Yeah. And but it's going to be somebody them. weird. Like, I, I, I don't even care like, about hooking up. I just want to get, I want to I fucking expose some <laughs> poor people. To drinking bros madness. Yeah. Unawares. That's my goal. To this. Like, hey, do you want to come to this show? I'm going to be in it. Like, oh, that's great. No, no, no. You then, don't tell them, Dan. You invite them to the show. You seat them. And then you leave and go to the green room and then come out on stage. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you, and then just, then just start telling fucked up jokes. Can dude. you imagine if you took a stranger, a complete stranger mm-hmm. on this cruise and they had no idea, and it was like, "Hey, man, I know this is our first date, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna." <laughs> I, well, I'm gonna... I did that. I did that, Ross. Oh, you took like, you took somebody on a cruise as as, I, as their I, first no, date. No, I I took a stranger to the Salt Lake City Range 15 premiere. No way. How, and how is we that? We weren't supposed to. We weren't supposed to be there. Uh, but we happened to be there, and I I invited this bartender to go to the. I was like, you want to just go see a movie? That's all I said. And when I walked in the theater, the whole theater like fucking freaked out because we weren't supposed to be in Salt Lake at that time. We just oh, happened to stop. Oh, that's in. a baller move, dude. And she sat down. I I actually left and went and drank while the movie played because I saw it way too much at that point. And then came back <laughs> for it to end. And it was just like it was really funny. That could be really good or really bad. Really bad. Yeah. How did it, how did it t- turn up? Did you guys fuck that? Night? Oh, it was fun. It was funny. Like like she was like, "What the fuck?" Like, yeah, it was a good time. And you but you ended up boning, right? No, 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 no. I got that one. Uh, she was hanging out with somebody else. She was sixteen, sixteen yeah. years <laughs> old in Utah. She was a bartender. Get over it. <laughs> it's Utah, though. You Get know? over it. <laughs> it's, it's still Utah. A lot of weirdness goes down. Oh in Utah. my god, you have no idea. No, I, d- I don't have any idea. No. Um, but everybody who comes back from there is just like, oh, look, I've been there, you know, obviously to see you guys a bunch of times. But I never really interacted outside. It was either at, a, at the office or at your house. You took us to that place where, you know, that guy was cooking up duck and steak and a bunch of weird soups and shit. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, yeah. That was the wi- that's still to this day, man, that was the wildest restaurant I've ever been to. Which was place like, was that? It looks like a grocery store. Yes. <laughs> and I, th- I thought we were walking into... Uh, Time and season. Yes. Mm. Time and seasons. And I thought we were walking into like a specialty grocery store, like a, like a Middle Eastern one, where it was just like seasonings and stuff. And then there's an... Was he Asian? 
Yeah. 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 And he was behind the thing and it was, and Jared, you, you were like, oh, just, he'll make you whatever. Cause he makes the food. You don't pick it. Yeah. yeah he's, he knows like how to make 35,000 dishes. He doesn't 30, have a menu. Correct. He yeah. just, he just asks you what you want. <laughs> <laughs> 35,000 different variations of dishes and then all this food starts coming out. Was it good? Cuz usually a place with a very large menu is not very good. No, it, it so it had very little menu, but he had 35,000 different variations of the things that he was making and it was hit and miss. No, it doesn't have it doesn't have any menu. He just has on the board yeah. what meat he got in that oh, day. Oh yeah, that's meat and fish. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So He's like, hey, I've got fresh quail. I've got fresh elk. I've got this. I've also got, you know, fresh wahoo. I got lobsters that just came in. Like, so what do you want? Do you want fish or fish or meat? He probably like, had a bunch then, of cod, right? No, no, I, don't know. I didn't did ask. <laughs> no, he, he definitely did not have any fucking cod. Uh, the joke that won't yeah, die. Yeah, because there is no because there is no cod. There is no cod. <laughs> I've um, got a shirt that says there is no cod. Yeah, actually, there is yeah. no cod. Uh, yeah, but but when he cooked that shit up, like it, dish after dish was coming out. I, to me, it was hit and miss. Where I was like, man, one thing was amazing. The next thing, I was like, that is totally incorrect of something I would order. But uh, <laughs> he didn't seem like the type of dude that would own and operate a restaurant in Salt Lake City. Um, yeah, it's just very odd, and I, I don't know who found it or why. It, it, was it you or was it Matt? Because yeah. he lived close to no, Matt. I found it. Oh, it was uh, you. Actually, Jason Orvis took me there, and I was like, holy cow, this is fucking crazy. Because, like, when we went in there, you know, when Jason goes in there, like, homeboy locks the door, and then it's like a two-hour ordeal, and we eat, like, 15 different dishes. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, the bill wasn't that bad for all that food, you know? No, not at all. It, it, was, it was nothing crazy. Um so I, I wanted to, to chat with you guys about this. I saw this article today about a social credit score to determine who can buy guns. Did you see this fucking thing? No. Yeah, no, but they're, they've been doing it in China. Yeah, they've been doing it in China. But they, and so what they've been doing, like you get blocked for, you can't buy air travel. You can't buy train tickets. You can't fucking get a mortgage or anything like Correct. that if you're fucked up on the social scale. Yeah, um, and it's, you know, it's becoming a Black Mirror episode yeah. at this point. Um, but this was this and this was surprising because this was on uh, this was sent in from Infowars to uh, to us today. Um, and look, Alex Jones leans pretty, pretty far right, obviously. Um, but he said that this is him off of his website. The Trump administration considering social credit score system to determine who can buy a gun and that they would partner with a big tech company to use spy data from Amazon, Google and Apple to determine it. Um, man, yeah, I've, that doesn't sound like it's going to fly. No, right? <laughs> That'll never happen. <laughs> that I mean, like that that will never happen. Correct? That's just no. Okay, because look, I take everything that Alex Jones says with a, a very, very huge grain of salt. Uh, this right. one seems too far off the fucking grid for me. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Not in our lifetime, I don't think. But maybe in our like grandkids' lifetime, mm -hmm. if if maybe if some shit went to some form of this, because let's face it, right? Socialism will probably take over in two hundred years. Well, I mean, the universal basic income thing that Andrew Yang's always talking about. Yeah, and he made the next debate, by the way, because of the displacement of workers because of new technology will probably become a thing at some point. Yeah, yeah. and that is that's the most socialist thing I could think of. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! They chiseled down the Dems, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah they cut them down. But Yang made who, the, who Yang, got cut? Yang made the cuts. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, the veteran uh, Did, out of Hawaii, she got cut. Hawaii. Beto get cut yet? Hawaii. No, he made it. Fucking Beto what? made it. You believe that shit? Yeah, Beto said the other day that if uh, he gets elected, he's going to force people to sell their assault rifles back to the government. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All sorry, right, but luck, I didn't buddy. buy them from you, bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so get fucked. Good fucking luck with that, homeboy. Um, yeah, he keeps popping up, and I'm not sure if it was because of the, uh, like, you know, obviously he did terrible in the, in the debates, right? Um, and then the El Paso shooting happened, and he was, what was he there, there Jared? Was he your congressman or your district? <laughs> he was a congressman for a while in yeah. El Paso, yeah. Yeah, so he, he popped back up during that, and that seemed to bring his numbers up just a tad. But 
to my knowledge, the last poll I saw, he was at a two percent. So that motherfucker made it, dude. Yeah, you've only got to be a so you got to be a two percent and have at least one hundred thirty thousand individual donors. Got it. Got it. Or got contributors, it. I guess, is what they're legally called. God, that guy's the dumbest motherfucker on the face of the he's, oh, he's such he's a weak smart. little he's like bitch. A, he's dude. like a Stepford politician, but he's not like, even that good at it. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, he would just stamp his feet. Like I, he's like somebody that I could see crying a lot, like as the president. Like, because people don't listen to Can him. Can you imagine yeah. if there was a fucking terrorist attack and that pussy was the president of the United States? No. Oh, he would be apologizing fucked. for them. Like, like, <laughs> we need what? to understand why these terrorists uh, uh, did what they did, and they would say a bunch of stuff. In, <laughs> that's a good impression of him, by the way. It is, actually. And uh, he would just say a bunch of stuff in Spanish. Yeah. This is all happening because of uh, Bibliotecas. What, what we've done to the Spanish people. The Discotecas. Like, I, I grew up Mexican, so <laughs> yeah. Get fucked, Beto, you piece of shit. Beto's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, that guy. I wish, dude. I would, I would just love to see someone like grab both his ankles and pull his feet out from under him really fast, and he just smashes. Let's his start face bullying on the Beto. Let's start hashtag yeah. bullying Beto, and we just show up to his bullying events. Beto, and you kneel yeah. down behind him, and I push him over. Oh, God. Yeah, and we give but him he wedgies cries. and stuff like he, middle he school cr- style bullying. Yeah, you're talking about old school like <laughs> '80s movies bullying of Beto. <laughs> That's dude. I was thinking about it. I think Baggy Batman is Beto Batman. Oh, <laughs> that's perfect. Actually, that is actually Beto perfect. Batman. Hey, Michael. Oh. Uh, <laughs> after the if you once you pull off the costume, Beto is Baggy Batman. You're, that is that is the perfect. Yes. That is the it's perfect it. fucking. <laughs> it's Beto Batman. Uh, that is the perfect description for that oh. guy. Oh, oh Alfred. <laughs> You know what we got to do? We got to get Zach Hurd to fucking do a meme. Photoshop a meme of Beto and a Batman, an oversized Batman costume. Yeah, yeah. on Drinking Bros, uh, yeah. the, the private group on Facebook. Anybody can join, by the way. Jared Taylor created this group, and it's fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of them. There's 230 of them. Yeah. If you're um, not part of the Facebook groups, I mean, singles is alone. Is That's mine and Dan's playground. I, mean, I know. You guys really torch it. I was there. getting some good nudes yesterday. Do you get nudes All off of Drinking Bros singles? Oh, hell yeah. I've seen pretty much all. Every hot chicken singles naked. You are kidding. So is it personal? Or are they are they putting it up? Do you guys allow it posted on the page? No, no, no. They don't put it up. Uh, you know, there's there's a couple secret groups uh, in the Drinking Bros community. Oh. TNA, XXX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a really, really secret one that we uh, that that I won't say the name of because it's a code. I but think that one. Yeah. Some good ones go in. Go in. Yeah. And I, because I think you guys both get the same nudes, right? From from the. the... I don't know. Oh, you don't? Because no. you've seen. I, yeah, look, yeah. I mean, I've I'm seen sure so many people some... naked at this point that seeing some random girl's nudes does nothing for me. I'm too fucked up at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, dude, I like it because I like, I like talking to someone for a while and seeing them <laughs> in normal, wholesome pictures, and then seeing them, you know, naked or jamming themselves with a lamp. Yeah, I, I like them. With that's you. that's one I'm thing I do you. like. <laughs> That's why I like celebrity porn, because I like to see people in porn, but out of their element. Like, porn's not their element, but they're in porn. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just Amber's or stuff, because people do have sex all the time. That seems totally normal to me. But to see, like, the page girl from WWE getting fucking, like, she apparently likes cum on her face. Really? Oh, yeah. Big time. This okay. is, hey, send me some links. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I haven't either. Just search page I, WWE on fucking uh, P- I hit her up. Uh, I hit her up on Instagram the other day. I was going to see if she'd let me take her out. Really? She might. She's a, she seems like a cool chick. Dude, I don't know she, why. I think I could get a pretty a B or A list celebrity. I mean, you know. Yeah, you're you're the surprising one out of the group because people ask this all the time. They're like, man, I don't understand. On Jared's Instagram or in Dream Bird Singles, he's always with fucking girls, and you can always get them to do fucked up shit. Because <laughs> the, the picture you posted the other day in Dream Bird Singles, I was just like, oh my god, dude, uh, you yeah, go hard, yeah. dude. Yeah, I mean, I like to keep it, you know. Everybody, everybody nowadays is in this, you know, I'm going to make my life look super fun on Instagram and I'm happy and, and blah, 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 blah. You know, it's, it's this very superficial fake like aura. Whereas I'm like, I am going to fuck with all of you. If you follow me, you're not going to understand my life. At all. You know, <laughs> you're not afraid to post a four. Yeah, dude. Yesterday I put up three pictures in a row with, with a girl. These pictures were two years old and she's a girl I've known since I was eight years old. And I was just like best weekend ever. 
And it just like the amount of people that were thrown off, like, wait, what the fuck? Like, I was. I'm the, I'm one of them. I thought this? yeah. I thought yeah. you were tagging that girl. I did. I did. And and there were thirteen thousand people watched that story and twelve thousand people clicked on her fucking tag. Holy that's shit. How, that's how invested everybody is. Like, and this is why I give you guys this entertainment is because you like it. Well, I, like, I will say this too. Like you get into some fucking weird shit sexually. So yeah, I always click on these people cause I'm like, man, who is down for this? Um, and then I'll go through their backstory and try to learn a little bit about their lives, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that girl was from eighth grade. Uh, I met her when I was in seventh grade. Yeah. But she's not still in seventh grade, right? Right. She's a, no, she graduated, no, no. right? That was, yeah, she that didn't was get like, held back. That was 25 years ago or something like that. Okay, that, but still, she graduated seventh grade, right? She yeah, got yeah, okay. she graduated. Okay. She lives, out, she lives out in Raleigh, you know? Really? She's local to Dan. I hope she knows how to swim, because uh, that's why I'm wearing swim trunks today, just in case this hurricane, quote unquote, Guess gets too bad. Guess who texted me this morning? I'll fucking swim home. Who? Who? Miss Christmas. Really? She looks like she's having a good time. The one that got away, dude. Christmas Abbott. That now, I told her I told her this morning, I said, are we gonna finally just go away for a weekend and after five years of us dancing around this horse shit, just do it? <laughs> the weird okay, so here's the weird thing about Christmas Abbott, right? I I think genuinely that would have been a good wife for a long time, and that would have been yeah, a... Yeah, but I can't have a good wife. I would, I would have fucking pissed her off and turned her crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it would be a... It, it would be a uh, yes, you would, probably. God Dude, I have... Yeah, there were, like, there were like two very wholesome, very nice, very amazing women in my life, and the reason why I stay away from them is because I know that I would get bored with the nice wholesome thing in about 60 days and I would start trying to fucking, you know, maneuver my antics without letting them find out and then they find out and I would turn them crazy. Like, to where, you know, then they're really upset and pissed off and, you know, grieving for a year and I just fucked their life up. Well, I don't, don't want to do that. Yeah, I can, I can say this too. Christmas Abbott's the wrong girl to piss off. If you've uh, been reading TMZ in the last year, you'll know why. <laughs> uh, boy, she'll show up at the gym, dude, and just say, fuck you. Um, <laughs> I, well, oh, I, I'd well. love to get her on the, on the show to, to tell that story. we got to wait. Well, we those. will. Uh, you know what? I'm going to come back after the cruise, after the grand opening over here. So October, I'll be back. I got to take Topless Stacy out on a couple dates, you know. <laughs> yes. I, so that was another one. I she's can see a, you with, she's a, with a, a Topless Stacy from yeah, Fake she, News. She's pretty wild. She's in hedonism right now doing a photo shoot. What is She's so, in hedonism? Oh yeah. She That's fucking I talked dope. to her this morning. She just she was in the Bahamas. Now she's heading over to hedonism too. What is that? Hedonism it's too. A it's a sex swingers club. island yeah. basically. You're fucking joking. Oh yeah. No, that's awesome. I thought that was just like a fucking Epstein thing. No, it's real. Really? But this no, is like, like all yeah. above board. There's Everything's on the up and up there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, who, do you have to go with a partner? Can you just show up? No, well, I mean, if you're a girl, you, sure you, you, a you can, chick, you can you show can up show however up. you want. But if you show up as a dude alone, that's probably not going to work out for you unless you're rich as yeah. shit. Right. Yeah. right. Wow. So she's there right now. Yeah, she's doing a photo shoot for this company she works with. And I'm sure she's getting into some shenanigans because she's a shenanigan type of girl, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. You, saw, yeah. You, you saw her out on the town on accident, right? Yeah. We just ran into each other at a comedy club and she was, uh, she was having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I heard she was fucking trash. She was very drunk, and she was with uh, this beefy marine-looking dude. He was yeah. a good-looking dude, so hopefully they, you know, use protection. Eh. Or not. Or not. Or anal. I mean, either way. Just, either way. I don't like babies. I just, I don't mind them fucking. I just, you know, and I don't pull out either, so I get it. But She's funny, man. Somebody else was watching the show in town. They were like, hey, man, top with Stacy. I fucking know her. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's infamous in this town. She's funny, yeah. She's, That's awesome. She's a partier. She like, I, I could definitely <laughs> see you with top with Stacy. Because she, by the way, Jared, if you haven't met her, she's actually really fun in real life. Yeah, I've been talking cool to her. The two of yeah. you guys would fucking burn it down for a weekend. I bet. Yeah, well, you and Top with Stacy out on the town together. I mean, that should be the Christmas special. JT and Top with Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> weather and wings, dude. And it's just the two of you oh, guys man. talking about the weather, eating wings, and then having weird sex. I bet she'd be down for that. <laughs> Let me ask our, our producer Jamie knows her. Hey, is is she single? What's her story? What's top? Yeah, she's story? single. She is. It, it like a okay, 
Uh, Jared says she's single. So um, I like the fact that you guys stay in touch with her. That's so great. She's fucking <laughs> funny, dude. Who's our? She who's posts our really bro? fucked up good memes on uh, on Instagram. So I'm like, all right, that's good. good okay. What's her What's her real name? We'll have people follow her. Um, shit, Kimberly I, Ryan. N- yeah, it's Kim. I gotta look. I gotta look up. R H I N E. Jared, shout it out. Jared, I'll do the drinking bro of the week. You find her Instagram handle so we can shout her out because she's rad. Um, this one was submitted to us by Christopher West Bay. Um, and he said, Hey, I just wanted to, uh, uh, make a recommendation for drinking bro of the week. Illinois state trooper, Nick Hopkins was shot and killed in the line of duty while serving a search warrant in East St. Louis. He was a husband and a father of three trooper. Hopkins was a big hearted man who had a smile for days. He was also the type of guy that if you called upon him, he would always show up. His kindness, honor, and integrity, along with his compassion for people, made him one of the the greatest officers we've ever had. Trooper Hopkins will be greatly missed, but his legacy will be carried on. Indeed it will. Cheers. Uh, Cheers to uh, Christopher uh, cheers, West cheers. Bay, and uh, and to uh, obviously uh, Mr. Nip Nick Hopkins who lost yep. his life, man. Oh man, that sucks. But man, uh, cheers. we appreciate it, Christopher. Thank you for the yeah. uh, submission, man. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, what's uh, okay? What's, what's Instagram? Yeah, it is Kimberly Alexis nine. So just Kimberly spelled normal. Alexis A L E X I S and number nine is Miss Kimberly Topless Alexis Stacey. nine. What's her? Does she have a lot of followers. Uh, eight thousand. Ah, oh, that's not bad at all for shit, man. Uh, Wimble- Yeah, we should we should put po- we should post her up. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, think we, we should, should post her up. Hey, I want to close out the show, Jared, with this. Um, we, Matt was on yesterday, and we were talking about uh, Dan Crenshaw. I thought you guys had all met him. You got to meet him. How how was he in real life? Was he a good I, dude? I had a great life. Yeah, dude, he was really he's super smart, super cool. I like him. Cool, cool, man. Yeah, because a, a lot of people had hit us up, and they were like, "Shit, man, uh, you know." Dan seems like a good dude. How was he in real life? So he was a cool. Oh, he was he's super funny. Like we just joked the whole time. Really? Because he was really yeah. funny on Saturday Night Live. So yeah. he's like that in real life. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time. It was me and Evan. So of course, you know, we drove him down a rabbit hole of of just nonsensory, and it was a, it was a blast. I, I I loved having lunch with him. It was all right. Can cool. you can you confirm this this story then? Did Evan stamp him with coffee? Oh yeah, that was on video. No way. Yeah. Holy shit. It's technically battery <laughs> on a congressman. Yeah, that's battery on a congressman. You're just saying. stamping the... I know stitches, uh, snitches get stitches and all, but fuck me. Wow. Be careful over there. Wow. No. That's really fucking ballsy, dude. I like that. He's been doing that to everybody. <laughs> that's Yeah, fun. it's a really funny I Mostly, movie. Mostly on the... He doesn't do it like on the hands or arms. He does it on heads and necks and shit. Heads and necks and Because it's arms. Evan <laughs> and he's an asshole. <laughs> You know what I mean? He's like the biggest troll in human history, I think. But it's Dan Crenshaw, man. Yeah. You can't just go stamping congressmen. Well, you can and you can't. Uh, you might be able to. <laughs> I don't know if that's a rule. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, uh, we will see. All and right. then uh, we'll see what happens to us here in Wilmington, North Carolina with uh, Dorian D'Anthony. Sounds good. Dan's right Ooh. on the river, too. So you're going to have a bird's eye view of uh, the winds and the there wisp and the, and the whole shit. Yeah, the good thing is there's no trees around there and it's not the ocean. So, like, I mean, it's not a big deal. No, I'll, big, watch, I'll nice watch the river. The weather. I'll watch the river rise. That'll be fun. Yeah, why not? <laughs> R- report back to us. Uh, for Jared Taylor, D'Anthony D'Anthony hey. Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>